Hello, my name is Joey Morgan, and I did way more than I had to on Doctor Who Apocalypse. My name is Jacob Licklider, and I uh, adapted Apocalypse for audio and played Meryl. Uh, adapting Apocalypse was perhaps, was perhaps one of the more difficult ones to adapt. Um, partially because, one, it's a very short novel, uh, and two, it has a lot of fan service. There's, if you've listened to it already, you'll know that it features a cameo, a, some big, a cameo from the second Doctor, and that was already way scaled back from the original book, which had him appear almost every other chapter, um, almost without, almost in, always in flashback form. Um, so essentially, I one of the big, big, big challenges was, was to cut that down to what was just necessary, um, because I just think fan service can be excessive, uh, especially if it's fan service like that where the Doctor just appears. Hello, my name is Avery Clark, or the Most Unsociable and I played the Grand Matriarch in Doctor Who, Time Worm Apocalypse. This was such a neat project. From Joey and Jacob doing a phenomenal job taking it from book to script to audio drama, to the amazingly talented cast of Whovians who spent so much time, put so much heart into the characters they portrayed, it has been a freaking awesome experience. I have loved getting to play a villain, and the Grand Matriarch has been one of my favorites so far. Hello, my name is Brian Corrigan, and in Doctor Who Apocalypse, I play Fetch and Kraz. The casting for this story was a bit weird, because it... I guess Joey doubled up on actors f from his uh, Exodus audition, so basically, your, uh, the Exodus audition was also an undercover apocalypse audition process which is fine i guess but you know uh so when he when he came to me and told me that that was the case i was like oh all right because i'm heavily involved with these anyway so i was just like all right what voices do you want me to do for kraz and fetch and he he briefly described to me that the, the two factions that feature in this story are separated by their accents, so I can't remember exactly what they're called, but the one Fetch is a part of is made up of British accents, and the one Kraz is part of is made up of American accents. So he basically gave me two characters with different accents, but also said to make the voices very unique and distinct. So he wanted something kind of golemish for fetch and i he didn't really give me anything to go off of for kraz so i tried to come up with my own interpretation of what i thought he sounded like but fetch was a was a hard one because he when he said golemish that had me worried because i've tried to do andy circus impressions before and I failed, so I decided, well, rather than do a straight-up impression of Andy Circus, why don't I try and do that, but also put my own little spin on it? And when it came out, I was a little worried that it sounded something more like Jar Jar Binks or Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 fo I found Fetch's voice really annoying, and I was pretty damn sure that joey would not want it but he really liked it in fact uh, while he was editing the story he he actually he actually sent me a message saying that he wanted to cuddle me as fetch which is okay then hi i'm mark credited as Corey williams and i voiced the character of hulda in the apocalypse adaptation Lord Hulda was a lot of fun to do, mainly because, well, first, I've never done a villain before, so that was that was unique, that was interesting, but also, to start, for, for, for a villain to start with, uh, Hulda was quite intriguing, and I knew he'd be really fun to voice, mainly because reading his lines in the script, I saw this kind of unintentionally amusing character who was evil, who did some really bad things, and uh, who was really brutal too but also just dastardly but also aware of how dastardly he was and he enjoyed it 
So I tried my best to really uh, bring that to life in the in the uh, adaptation, and really, um, I had a lot of fun doing it, especially the scene where he goes all shouty, and I think that's actually like the last you see of him in the audio, so I thought that was a, a fitting end to an over-the-top dramatic character, who I really enjoyed playing. So um, thanks again to Joey uh, for putting this whole thing together. It's really fantastic, and uh, thanks for letting me be a part of it again. Um, it was it was interesting uh, doing this one as it was a different sort of cast to put together. Um, we didn't do an open casting call for it, and um, and that's because it's a really short story. You know, we knew that we were going to adapt it into a really short story because first off, the book isn't that long, um, and Tower Apocalypse as a story isn't the best. So we didn't want to you know make it a long story. We didn't want it to overstay its welcome, as it were. Um, so I think uh, I think making it a shorter story was a wise decision, and thus we didn't want to waste time with a full casting call. Um, however, we do still have some newcomers to this uh, this story. We had a few people that um, that auditioned for Exodus, and we were like, "Well, Exodus doesn't doesn't have that many female roles because that's where all of our new people come from." Um, Exodus, Exodus doesn't have that many female roles, so would you like to be in this story instead? So that's where our newcomers come from, and they're all fantastic. Um, loved hearing their voices they were all great um so so in addition to this being a, a totally precast story um we had we had a great opportunity through the exodus casting call to get some new people in on it and that was really fun also it's just as a story it's oddly traditional for Doctor Who. It's, it's almost like a mix of the original dalek story and the crotons um i mean the crotons make sense because it is sort of Nigel Robinson does really like the Second Doctor, and there's always a lot of Second Doctor references in his books. Um, but yeah, and adapting it, 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 just, it was a, really just a matter of what to cut. Um, and in making cuts, I was trying to, uh, I was more taking care to aware, be aware of what worked on audio and what didn't, uh, which is very important, especially for Exodus, uh, for, well, for Apocalypse, for something like Apocalypse, because a lot of the ending is like visual the monster attack type stuff. Um, so we really tried to work on trying to make it work better for audio. Um, Miral as a character is very interesting. He, he's very much a the sort of old man who wants to see knowledge prevail and um, but is stuck in a world where basically knowledge is controlled. He's basically in an authoritarian, totalitarian system. Um, and he's sort of near the top, uh, but it's like sort of genuinely cloaked in like, um, like in that sort of utopia idea. Um, again, a very standard Doctor Who trope and a very standard science fiction trope that the utopia is actually a dystopia underneath. Um, but yeah, he and the Doctor really have a lot of good moments where they just sort of work together and Meryl tries to figure, is genuinely intelligent in trying to figure stuff out. So, you know, it's, it's a very fun character to play, um, and really provides kind of a backbone. When I was first cast in her role, I had no idea who she was, so I had to go back and do some research. Which I later discovered that she, in fact, had had a previous encounter with the Doctor before Apocalypse. During one of the second Doctor adventures, the second Doctor loses track of Polly, and while looking for her, stumbles across this young Pangistry girl, who points out where she went. In exchange for her help, the Doctor repairs her doll and plays the recorder for her. And it's just shortly after this that the Time Worm invades the Doctor's timeline and possesses young Lilith. The Time Worm possessed young girl grows up to be the Grand Matriarch ruler of the Pangistry, which is a six-fingered humanoid alien race who inhabit the um, planet of Kandasi. It is there that the Time Worm bides her time and waits for the Doctor to reappear. When voicing this character, I very much took into account the backstory and uh, the Time Worm herself, which is voiced by Anna Price, and the way that she does it is so neat is that uh, she makes the character's voice, everything she says drips with evil, like there is no good intent 
with anything she says. So with that, I took this leader, who the Time Worm had already been through, a goddess, Hitler, and now this alien ruler. And so uh, the Grand Matriarch was very confident. She was very sure of her scheme against the Doctor and very much thought she had the upper hand. With this, she I imagined her to have a very cool and calm demeanor in that she knew that whatever she did, the Doctor could not win this time. I don't know, she was just a very fun character to play. A very interesting villain in that where she came from was, was very interesting. Uh, but anyways, this has been a fantastic experience. I've loved working with these people. I hope you enjoyed Doctor Who Time Worm Apocalypse. Uh, and with that, laugh hard, run fast, be kind. Uh, as for Kraz, Kraz was another interesting character, but not in the same way as Fetch. Because Kraz, Kraz's voice took less thought to come up with. Basically... I have this very distinct character archetype in my head of what the tough guy should sound like, and it's it's, you, if the, it's a really tough guy, which I think Kraz is, that's how I interpreted his character. It should sound something like Andrew Lincoln's Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead. Like I said, with Fetch, I didn't want to do a direct impression of Andrew Lincoln because I I think I did that in my own my own original play by uh, my father called The Last Mondasian. Uh, I played a security guard named Garcia and I did my best to impersonate Andrew Lincoln and it it sounded okay but I wasn't particularly happy with it. And I didn't want to replicate that voice for this. So what I did was I lost the southern accent. And I I, I I still gruffed up my voice a bit, but in a different way. I actually can't remember how I did the voice, which is a shame. Because I'll never be able to use it again now. But yeah, so, so that was uh, how... Apocalypse worked out for me. It was pretty much just... I sat down, finished up my lines for Exodus, and uh, a couple days later, Joey was like, Oh yeah, by the way, Apocalypse lines are due soon. And I was like, let me get those done. And I got them done. And it was... It was, uh, it was pretty cool. If there's one thing I could change about how I did them, though, it's probably my microphone. Kraz doesn't sound too bad f- with that microphone, but Fetch can be a bit hard to understand at some time, at some points. And now that I've used this microphone I'm using right now, and, uh, <laughs> this is actually, like, the third take of this BTS thing, uh... Now that I've used this and done the fetch voice on it, I was experimenting with the intro. Uh, I have to say that fetch is a lot more... Oh shit, what's the word? Well, I could comprehend what he was saying much better than I could with the other microphone. So that's pretty much the only thing I would change about how I did the lines, but other than that... Not a lot left to say. It was a it was a fun experience, a pretty different one compared to Hitler. No, no, I don't think I went too over the top with it. I hope I didn't, but yeah. So this one was fun and relaxing to the vocal cords, unlike Hitler, who screamed and hurt my voice. In addition to the Doctor in this story, I play Raphael, and um. I think realistically, in retrospect, it's just because I didn't want to outsource to anyone else to play this character. Um, Because Raphael, he has like one or two profound moments. Um, And I think reading the book, I really overemphasized those profound moments in my head. Um, And other than those one or two moments, Raphael isn't a very interesting character. Um... 
but it was still fun enough to do. It was still interesting to um, uh, to specifically have a lot of scenes with myself. I know I've done scenes with myself before in in Brian's uh, third Doctor story, Last Mondasian, where I was the Doctor and um, another smaller supporting character. But Raphael is one of the biggest parts of the story, so um, so doing him and the Doctor was quite fun. Um, I enjoyed that. Um, I was glad I didn't have to do a big character voice for it like I usually do. Just use my regular voice, and that was fun enough. Um, so yeah, I had a great time recording this story. I had a great time editing this story. Um, and I very much look forward to uh, moving on to Revelation. Editing for that should begin soon at the time of recording this behind-the-scenes clip. Um, yeah, and I want to give one final thank you, of course, to everyone who auditioned for Exodus that we were able to put in Apocalypse. Everyone who we asked to be in Apocalypse, um, who was actually in it, um, and one final thank you, I think, is in order to, um, to not just the amazing cast of the story, but the amazing people behind it, um, uh, who really helped bring the adaptation to life, uh, to Jacob, of course, for adapting it, as he always does so greatly, um, and for Corey, aka Ark, uh, for helping us out with casting it. It was a ton of great fun, and I look forward to the next one.